Check, check. All right, fellow board members, I'll call the June 27th meeting to order. Uh, let's start it with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Roll call, please. Dr. McBride is absent. Mr. Perez? Here. Dr. Gase? Here. Mr. Kisabeth? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. And, Ms. and Dr. McBride did it. She's excused. She did plan on being absent today and she'd already made plans accordingly. So the meeting will continue. And first I'd ask for a motion to adopt the agenda with the amended action item 7.15 and 7.16 that was added. So moved. Second. And I would also like to point out that on page six, um, there's just a numbering discrepancy. So we're gonna go under action items from 7.02 to 8.11 and then back to 7.03. Um, that's just a label, so we're not gonna renumber everything. And then on page nine, um, President per or Vice President Perez, you'll notice that um, after 7.13, we will um, go to action item nine, which is for the opportunity for the public to dialogue with the board. So that's just numbering that there's no section eight. Um, but as I said, it's just a label, so we're not gonna renumber everything. I just didn't want you to stumble on it when you got to it. That's all. And the action 7.15 and 7.16 involves the hiring of a principal for the high school, correct? Yes. So with that, any other further discussion on the Agenda. And I'm sorry, um, I'll need to know who moved and seconded. It was Dr. Gase moved and- No, didn't? Kismet moved. Second. Kismet moved. Thank okay. you. Right here. Both please. Mr. Kisabeth. Yes. Dr. Gase. Yes. Mr. Williams. Yes. Mr. Perez. Yes. And it takes us to the agenda portion for recognition. Mr. Bowes. Thank you, Mr. Perez. It's uh, indeed my, my honor and privilege to uh, recognize the fourth quarter Crystal Apple Award winners for the 2021-2022 school year, our final recipients for this school year. Um, this is a program that uh, we brought back about five years ago, four years ago, uh, and we continue to recognize some of uh, uh, Tiffin's finest educators and staff members. Um, and certainly, Tonight we have two exceptional candidates to, to recognize. So first I wanna bring up Mrs. Charlotte Leininger. Mrs. Leininger is a intervention specialist at Noble 4-5. She was nominated by Michelle McComas. Charlotte has been a teacher for Tiffin City Schools for 22 years. Uh, during that time, she has served our special needs students in several different buildings. She is currently a teacher at Noble 4-5. She holds a Bachelor's of Science in Education for Developmentally Handicapped and a Master's of Education in the field of Curriculum and Teaching. In the area of teaching, uh, this is what Mrs. McComas has to say about Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte has a bag full of, of tricks and tips to help students remember and make connections to concepts being taught. It doesn't matter what time of the year or how long ago they were introduced. These tips and tricks are referred to whenever applicable. You often hear her reciting songs, rhymes, clue words, or doing movements to help trigger students throughout the students' thought processes. For example, when we are teaching measurement conversions, Charlotte moves through arm motions with each problem to help students decide whether they should multiply or divide. She moves throughout the whole classroom offering guidance, reinforcement, and encouragement. In the area of commitment, Mrs. Leininger's commitment to her students is undeniable. She identifies what students need and freely gives her time to help them succeed. She may chat with the student to see how she can help with them or she may give up her before school or lunch time to work with a student one-on-one. -on -one. Charlotte is focused not only on her students but also on all the students. She is committed to helping all students not just learn but to thrive in the classroom. 
Not only is Charlotte committed to her students, she is committed to teachers as well. She checks in frequently to see how things are going and how she can help, whether it is with schoolwork or survival, survival in general. She encourages, she encourages, boasts people up and help them work throughout whatever task is at hand. In the area of leadership, Charlotte demonstrates leadership in many ways. She in, is involved with the fourth grade planning team and brings new ideas to share with the group. She takes the initiative to seek out ways that she can help those around her. How can I help you? Or what can I do for you? Are questions you hear when she checks in on the teachers. Charlotte steps up and works alongside long-term substitutes uh, to, to ensure that meaningful learning is continued. She has taken the initiative to work through the phonics first training program to prepare herself for changes in the reading instruction program. In the area of student-centered, student-centered, that describes Char Charlotte. Her focus each and every day is not on what she needs to accomplish, but how she can help students. She checks in every morning to make sure that anxieties are in check and any issues are resolved so her students can start their day on very focused. Then it is on to helping students complete their morning work. Sometimes this means reading the problems and talking through how to solve them, or it might mean helping a student recall a process, bouncing one from one student to another. It's all about student growth and success to Charlotte. This is evident in how she fights for the needs of her students. Charlotte works diligently to gather data to prove what she already knows in her heart when a student is struggling. Likewise, she communicates daily with parents to share successes and proud moments. Charlotte has been known to take a picture of something a student has accomplished and wants nothing more than to show mom. Charlotte will take that picture and send it off to mom. It's all about valuing each student and focusing on what they need that moment. In terms of accomplishments, appreciate letters of appreciation. Sabrina Whitmer, one of our, our parents at Noble 405, has attached a letter expressing her appreciation for all that Charlotte has done to help her son succeed as a fourth grader. And I just want to share a little bit of, of that letter of appreciation. Sabrina says, I've been made aware that Miss Charlotte Leininger has been nominated for the Crystal Apple Award. I could not be more supportive of this nomination. I have had a lot of experience with teachers, therapists, and intervention specialists. So far in Colton's schooling, I want to make note that, that it has been an overwhelming positive experience with all involved, but Charlotte, she takes the cake. It takes a certain type of person to be able to get on a personal level with a special needs kid. She has the patience, kindness, expertise, and the intuition to know what to do and when to do it. She takes the time to thoroughly understand the mindset, strengths, and weaknesses of these children to foster an environment that produces daily social interactions, mental and academic success. Her dedication to her students shines bright. Charlotte's ability to connect and communicate at, all the, at, at a level that meets the diverse needs of her students is unmatched. Her positive energy and smile are contagious to all, and I'm so glad Colton got to be one of her kiddos. Congratulations, Charlotte, on this recognition, and thank you for all you do for the students and staff and families of Noble 4-5. We're very proud of you, and we're very fortunate to have you as part of the TCS family. Congratulations. So Mr. Bose asked me just now to say a few words. If you know me, you know how hard this is going to be. <laughs> the word few. Uh, first off, Mrs. McComas, thank you so much for nominating me, and thank you to the board for um, recognizing that. It is kind of awkward, I'm going to say, to stand up here and get awarded for something that I'm so passionate about, and that's part of me. But at the same time, it is very humbling to receive this award. I always tell the teachers that I am lucky enough to work with that I'm only as good as they allow me to be, and you've allowed me to be pretty amazing. So thank you for our teamwork with that. So thank you again. Our second nominee is Mrs. Christina Lutz. Christina, would you please come forward? Christina was nominated by Morgan Grover and Stacy Kiesel, both of Noble 4-5. Actually, Stacy is a district-wide uh, employee. She subs long-term for us mostly, and is also part of our uh, after-school program at Noble. 
Christina Lutz has been a special needs aide for us for the past seven years and a substitute educational aide for five years before that. Christina works with our multiple disability students every day at Noble 4-5. She also serves as a program assistant in Noble's 21st Century After School program. In the area of teamwork, uh, when it comes to when the regular teacher was out on maternity leave, Chris was able to keep things running smoothly in the classroom. She went above and beyond to prepare for new students coming into the classroom. Chris often stays late beyond her contracted day to ensure that things are prepared and ready for the students the following day. This time is spent helping the teacher or completing items she knows needs to be finalized. In the area of commitment, Christina always comes to school with a positive attitude. She comes in early and stays late to ensure that, that she has completed the duties of her job completely and goes above and beyond when helping with things that are not part of her job. She is always willing to lend a hand with tasks throughout the building, such as bulletin boards and covering duties for others. In the area of leadership, Christina does not wait until someone approaches her about a need. If she sees something, she brainstorms ideas to solve the problem. She communicated effectively and professionally with the office and teaching staff about anything that arises within her duties. She took the lead on organizing many activities in the classroom while the teacher was out for her maternity leave and that things ran smoothly with the sub-teacher. In the area of taking pride in your work, Christina always gives 110%. If she is given something to make or create, she will go above and beyond making sure that the work she does is done in a professional way. She will go out of her way to laminate, type, edit her work to make sure that it is not only presentable, but professional and fun. In the area of outstanding accomplishments, awards, and letters of appreciation, some of Christina's outstanding, outstanding, outstanding accomplishments include organizing and helping manage toodles, guiding students in the budding genius after school program and her positive yearly evaluations congratulations christina on this recognition and thank you for all you do for the staff and students and families of noble four five we're very proud of you and very fortunate to have you as part of the tcs family congratulations I, whoever, do not like to speak. So I will just say thank you very much. I'm humbled. Um, I'd also like to thank the wonderful people I work with. They truly are the best. Thank you. That's it, Mr. Perez. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bose. And she didn't say much, but I would tell you that I had the fortune of having to get the chance to walk two of my kids to Noble School. And seeing her there to greet you there, I think it was just, it made it so much better. I remember going through the winter, through the cold, and you never looked down. You always picked those kids up and you always looked out for them. So I think it's it's wonderful that you get the award, but I think it's, it shows what we have welcoming our kids into our school buildings. So thank you. I guess now we turn to board reports, committee reports. First, business advisory, Dr. Gase. Business uh, Advisory Council met um, twice since our last meeting <clears throat> on uh, May 26th <clears throat> and again on June 23rd. Uh, in summary, um, the, the, some of the um, <clears throat> attendees um, complimented the, uh, uh, the Junior Achievement National Competition Award winners, uh, and they felt that uh, some of the mock interviews that the, um, some of these employers helped with uh, was helpful for their uh, presentations. Um, a lot of discussion about skills uh, needed on the job uh, for specific uh, types of skills, including uh, some things as important as attendance, ethics, thinking independently, basic skills, general skills, and communication. Um, it's all directed towards um, trying to develop some type of uh, um, model for uh, discussion and uh, work towards uh, uh, educating our high school students graduating to be prepared for uh, job performance. Uh, we did um, uh, last this past month, um, there was a uh, job shadowing uh, booklet. We talked about um, rotating the meetings. Uh, um, for instance, next well, next month we'll have a, a month off, but then we'll go to Mercy Health, followed by National Machinery, then NCOS ESC. Um, the Yes, uh, June 23rd's meeting was ended with a, a tour of Camp Invention. 
all uh, directed by capable hands of Pat Smith. And the next meeting will be August 25th at Mercy Health Tiffin. Thank you, Dr. Gase. Um, next is Finance Committee, and we did not meet, but we all got the reports in terms of our expenditures. And uh, a thank you to the staff with Ms. Perry. In case you don't know, they were asked to uh, provide lots of information to some quick auditing on a, about a federal program, correct? Yeah, it was on the ESSER two program. Right, and you gave you, what, five days to turn around and give them that information, so mm -hmm. um, maybe it's good that we didn't meet that week so that your staff actually gets to work and do what they have to do, but it's something we're gonna have to anticipate with all these federal pr programs that we have is all this monitoring, and so thanks to their staff. Um, hopefully we meet next month, but everything else is according to your five-year forecast, correct? And now to support services with, well, Dr. McBride, did you leave a report with anyone? Oh, we did not meet. They did not meet. And then so then we turn over to student achievement with Mr. Williams. Um, I think the big thing I wanna bring up with student achievement is the student achievement fair that's at the Capitol Conference. Uh, they've got uh, uh, taking nominations for student programs, uh, performing groups and artwork. So I think that's something we um, want to try to get some nominations for from the district. Um, again, the, uh, the capital conference is in November. So I think we want to get some of that turned around here as the, the new school year starts. Mr. Bose, have we ever had anything down there? I've only been there a couple of years and I've never seen like our students in the shows down there. I don't, I don't think we've had anything in the student achievement portion of it. Um, I know that we've had several presentations uh, in the few years that I've been involved in it from Tiffin City Schools, but uh, in terms of student achievement, I don't believe so. Okay. Stacy Geiger uh, with her her business students presented. So, thank you. Yeah, because I'm I know that some of you present down there on the board member administrator level, but it's been nice to see some of our kids performing as well. And back to Mr. Williams for the policy and governance committee report. Uh, the primary activity this past month was a, a review of several policies that we're going to need to update here in the near future related to um, technology updates, uh, specifically the use of Chromebooks and other some other social media type things. Um, it spanned, um, Mr. Kisbeth, help me, um, which, which policies was it? It was E, uh, it's slipping my mind. E, I think uh, the policy group ED, um, yeah. So there was uh, some minor changes that'll be coming to the bulk of the policies in that group. Um, again, just sort of uh, updates uh, to reflect the, the use of technology uh, in the schools now. Because I know that's something Mr. Weber was asking about was the policy. Is it too late, Mr. Bose and Mr. Richards isn't here, and Dr. Zoller isn't either, but to have something in place for the new school year, it would require a policy committee to come up with something and then have three readings, right? The, the timeline probably, we wouldn't meet the timeline for that based on July and then August would be the next meeting. The school year would already be started at that point. And, and most of the changes aren't, um, aren't things that change handbooks or things like that, right? They're, they're mostly just updates to wording and policies, um, board policies. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Um, I've got one other thing here. Um, so it's noted um, in the exhibits on page 12, we've got something for all the board members to review. It's the social media guidelines for school board members. It, it outlines a, a set of guidelines <laughs> uh, for how board members um, should be interacting with social media if they choose to, right? Not a mandate by any means to interact on social media, but if you choose to, what are some of the, <clears throat> I mean, some of the, the, the guardrails and guidelines around that. Um, I think we've got a, a little bit of discussion here if we wanna treat it more like the board operating principles or if we wanna treat it as an actual policy. Uh, so looking for some discussion on that uh, upcoming, but uh, that is on page 12 in the agenda. Did you want the discussion now or? No, just, okay. um, just for all the board members to review that and so for some upcoming discussion because he did email it out to the board members. I remember reading it over already. I think, did it go to everybody or no? Uh, it just went to, I believe the board members, but it's never been in a official board okay. meeting as a, a topic. Okay. Any other questions? 
question on the um, Chromebooks. Did, did we pass that um, insurance uh, plan? Or is that is that part of the? Uh, so that would that would be in uh, support services. So Megan and sorry, uh, Dr. McBride and I have been keeping in contact about which portions of that are support services versus policy. Yeah. Uh, so there's there's certainly some of it that has to do more with just the the technology aspect of support services, and some of it is definitely policy changes that Mr. Weber's asked for. So. And I think that's probably going to be on the plate for the new superintendent that we definitely need something for the next school year on that yeah um, i think um long term there's a a meaningful uh financial investment that's going to be required um, and i don't want to go too much into it um uh, mr weber's here but i don't want to um give too many details but there right now we're running on some grant money for some of that and eventually we would expect that, that money would no longer be available so we'll have to figure out how to how to uh, fund that every year investment for those chromebooks So I guess you would just get with Dr. McBride when you want to set it on for agenda for discussion. Okay. So next we turn to 4.02, superintendents, assistant superintendents, reports and recommendations. Again, Dr. Zoller is not present this evening. So Mr. Bose. Thank you, Mr. Perez. I, the two items that I have, I'm actually going to defer to um, Mrs. Kuhn um, to talk about the Tornado Academy handbooks and the extended learning opportunities in Camp Invasion. Ms. Kuhn. Uh, my apologies to the board for this being the first reading for the Tornado Academy handbook. Um, what we have to do with that handbook is actually merge all of our handbooks together. Um, so it takes a lot of refinement and going through and making sure that there's not duplication in the handbook. Um, what we have done a little bit different as we're an online program, we've made sure that we have live links within our handbook. Um, so for example, if they want to find information pertain pertaining particularly to the honor roll, they would click in the table of contents and it would take them directly to that portion in the handbook. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier for operation. Uh, we've updated and included all of our dates uh, for required sessions for students, and then also updated our staffing um, information in the handbook. Um, but outside of that, it's the same as what you have read in all the other handbooks. It's just a merger of all of them together. Um, and then specified in regards to um, online programming. So um, in talking about our summer program, um, I really wanna thank Randy Conger, Tim Weber, um, Aaron Gillig, Don Cook, and Emily Boone. Um, these individuals have been extremely helpful in getting our programs up and running. Um, Tim Weber and his department are making sure that we have the technology that we need. Randy Conger, of course, is making sure that we have transportation in place. Um, Aaron Gillig is assisting with making sure that we have um, supports in place to meet our students with special needs. And then also Don Cook and Emily Boone, they help supervise those programs. Um, we did have to make some adjustments with our summer program for K through eight students. Initially, we had hoped for a six week program, um, but as staff is tired and needs a break, rightfully so, uh, we made an adjustment and we have adjusted it to two week sessions and there were three options for parents to sign up for. The first session uh, completed last week. We had 39 students who participated in that session. Um, this session we have 16 students and the final session we have 21 students signed up for it. Um, last year we did allow students to sign up for multiple sessions, but again, due to staffing um, concerns, we've limited it just to one two week session that they can sign up for. Our high school program nine through 12, um, Emily Boone is assisting in that program along with all of our staff who's um, making sure that students are understanding the material. We have 63 students who are participating in it and they are taking over 20 courses. Um, we've only been in that program. This just started the third week of that program, and we've already had students earn 13.5 credits that they were in desperate need of earning um, to try to help them get back on track for graduation. So we're very excited about that. Um, the incentive for that program is that as soon as the students finish their work, 
and earn the credit, they no longer have to attend the program. So there is a, a large incentive for them to try to get that work done. So um, Camp Invention, I uh, really wanna thank Pat Smith and Judy Downey. Um, Camp Invention is something that I got involved with two years ago. Um, I actually use vacation days um, so I can kind of get back to my roots and enjoy teaching. Um, and it's a phenomenal program. Um, it's four days. Uh, it's hands-on programming for students, um, and it's specifically related to science and math and creativity in general. So it's like a STEAM program. We presently, this last year, we had 88 students who participated in our program. That's the largest number of students that we've had to date. Um, typically, that program would cost $245 for each student. Um, thanks to Pat Smith and her ability to secure donations, we are able to only um, offer that for $125 to each student. Um, we had over eight districts uh, represented as part of those eight stu 88 students. Um, and it was very exciting to see how eager the students were. And it's extremely rewarding um, to kind of get to have the opportunity to sit back on that side um, and have that engagement with students. So um, wonderful program. Um, I highly encourage you, if you've never seen it, to stop out and check it out. I know Business Advisory went through and they really seem to be impressed with that program. So. Any questions? How many uh, how many instructors were there this year? Uh, for Camp Invention? Yeah. There are four instructors, and we had uh, student assistants. Each classroom t this year had, I believe, three students oh, okay. in those classrooms. Um, some of them are considered um, more like uh, high advisors. There are high school students, and then typically there are middle school students who also assist. Oh, so you um, know, okay. Mm -hmm. And we had Tiffin City School students who assisted. We had two Mohawk students who assisted. And there was a Seneca East student who also assisted. So great, great program. I was able to visit and the excitement, the enthusiasm and the energy in all four classrooms was unbelievable. It was just a really exciting thing to see. You could tell the kids were getting a lot of, a lot of good stuff out of it. That's all I have this evening, Mr. Perez. Thank you. Let's see, Director of Operations, good to see you back. Yes. Uh, item 7.08 tonight is authorizing us to buy three buses for this year. We're looking to get a one international IC and two Bluebirds, 84 passengers. Uh, we do. We did get a grant from the federal government for $46,000 per bus towards the bill. So that's why we're getting three this year instead of our normal two. Is that right a here? special grant or is that? Y y every once in a while they do that, yes. But that's the first I've gotten that. It's a special state grant. Oh, state. And this is the first time that they've given um, funding for three buses. They don't give the full funding. Um, they give about $46,000 per bus up to three buses. So, no, but it's no, it's not a regular grant. Are they air conditioned? No. Why is one bus smaller than the other two? Just the way we fit needs certain areas, certain routes. We try to replace the same thing. Gotcha, thanks. And then Mr. Daniels, can you tell us how the sidewalk's going in front of the high school? Uh, there's going to be a pour Wednesday morning and the final pour should be Friday morning. Okay. And have we heard anything else on the track with OSS Sports? Is that who it is? Mr. Richards and me walked the track and had some discussions, so. Oh, okay, thank you. Yep. All right. Okay, with all those reports concluded, then that turns us to section five, the opportunity for the public to address the board. Per our board policy, each person addressing the board shall give um, his or her name and address. If several people wish to speak, each person is allowed three minutes until the uh, total time of 30 minutes is used. During that period, no person may speak twice until all who desire to speak have had the opportunity to do so. 
So if anybody wants to speak, just go ahead and approach the microphone. Okay, hearing none, I do have a letter that was emailed to the board. Um, they could not attend and ask that it be read. There is one section though that I'm not going to name the employee because I think under a policy it would be an employee complaint, but I think the other speaks for itself. Uh, this letter comes from Callie Cessna, 115 Mohawk Street. I am a parent of a child enrolled at FLC and on an IEP. I am his advocate and biggest supporter. My son receives speech therapy, occupational therapy, and physical therapy. As you can imagine, that is a lot of time during the week to miss on classroom activities, but has been recommended and approved by TCS representatives and FLC staff. During the last board meeting, I heard Mrs. Tewitt mention that the TCS has no idea about how many of our district kids are enrolled outside of our pre provided preschool. I struggle to understand how that is even possible when a representative from TCS is always present on my IEP meetings and they have to approve each recommendation made for services. Are our district representatives not keeping track of which students they are participating in meetings for? During my last meeting involving TCS and FLC, I was critically unimpressed with the demeanor and attitude of the representation. Um, this was the first meeting we had had to discuss the, his plan for the next school year, and I did not appreciate the way I was talked to during that meeting, where I understand the fiscal responsibility pieces, argument to push our students to Lincoln Preschool. I find it unfair that our desires for where my child should attend and my decision about where it's best fit for him must collide. I felt bullied into moving my child to the Lincoln Preschool during the meeting. I was told that the decision to approve my child for a four day school week was reliant on me setting a meeting at Lincoln to tour the facility and discuss my child's potential en enrollment. I would like to note that when I went through our early intervention transition, I toured both facilities and made my decision on where I want to send my child. And he has since been enrolled in FLC since December of 2020. My last meeting in May, I was told the reason TCS could not guarantee anything in regard to making the decision for my child's next school year was because it was a price tag. Student services is supposed to be about what is best for our students to make the successful, not what's best for the district financially. And then it says, laying out a timeline for you, I was told I could expect an answer for an approval by Friday, May 20th. I called to follow up that day and sent an email requesting information on when I should expect a decision to and includes Dr. Zoller and Mr. Bose, and I think it was email test as well. On Wednesday, May 25th, I sent a follow-up email because I received no response. I received a general response that TCS hopes to have a resolution soon. On June 8th, I emailed the group again, no response. And then on June 23rd, I emailed this group again, no response. I am addressing this as I can imagine that many other parents are left waiting for responses for their children. These are our children and we hold the right to send them where they will be most successful. And I firmly believe that we are bullying parents into sending their children to Lincoln to get the services they need. We are making our district look bad. I felt I was left with the following options after my meeting. Send them to Lincoln and get all the services they need, even though I chose not to utilize this preschool or to keep my decision on what is best for him being at FLC and risk not getting him at all the resources he needs to be successful. And that is unfair to both me and my son. And the plan for open enrollment should not impact my child currently enrolled at FLC. Having a special needs child is hard enough. Please stop making this harder on us. Take our children and families out of the drama with FLC and let's develop a plan to set all our district children up for success instead of our internal egos. I am once again requesting a response so I can adequately plan for the next school year. Thank you for your time. And I think we got the email, so we would just refer to the superintendent to address that for our policy, correct, Mr. Bose? Any other further comments from the audience? Hearing none, then we'll move to the consent agenda, item six. And can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. You want me to go through each item, Ms. Perry? This section. You may want to at least um, recite the headings. Okay, so consent agenda, which is 601, approve the minutes from the May regular and special board meetings. 602, approve the treasurer's reports for May. 603, the employment is outlined below. 604, donations and grants. 
605, the certificate of the fiscal officer with those invoices and 606 supplemental appropriations and 607 fund to fund transfer. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So, so permanent improvement on the supplemental, that was for the, the roof, is that? Yes, the supplemental appropriations are for this year's adjustments. And yes, the 428,000 and the permanent improvement is for the Columbian roofing project. Okay. So that we would be able to put that purchase order out there and get that project started. Can you discuss that, Mr. Daniels? Yes, the the roof life expectation was down to about two years. If we didn't do anything, this will get us a 10 year guarantee on the roof moving forward. And that's a Colombian? The entire roof of Colombian. And when do you foresee them doing the work? Uh, starting very soon, hopefully next week. Oh, okay. So it'll be done before school starts, hopefully? Yes. Because we're doing other school too, correct? Is it, doing with what? The, is it with the, like the coating? Yes. It's the okay. Rubber co coating. And that's all out of permanent improvement. That, that's correct. Okay, so did we have a motion? So moved. A second, please. Second. Okay, any other further discussion on the consent agenda? Okay, hearing none, vote please. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Kizabeth? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. Now to the action items 7.01. Uh, the recommendation is to approve the administrator contract date correction. And that was for Ms. Two. We approved the contract, but the date needed to be corrected on the term, correct? So it was it was renewed with a July 1st starting date, and her contract term actually begins in August. Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. I, yeah. Second, Mr. Kisbeth. Any discussion? I have a question. It goes from an August 1st through July 30th, not July 31st. It should be July 31st. Thank okay. you for pointing that out. And that's important because she does work 260 days a year. So we need it to say the 31st. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? Vote, please. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Kizabeth? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. 7.02, renew the administrator contract, and that's for Kate Plott social worker and student family support service specialist. Do I have a motion to do that? So moved. Second? Second. Second, Mr. Kisbeth. Any discussion? My only question is most of these are 8-1. This one starts July 1. The administrator contracts vary. Usually um, an administrator that works 12 months will start August 1st. Um, and it's just aligns with Ohio Revised Code, and their contract will be August through July. But when we have administrators that are less than 12 months, I believe that Kate Plott is a 200-day employee. Um, so the July through June for the fiscal year, that's appropriate for her because she might start um, in August and finish in June. So that start date becomes a little bit more irrelevant, so we align it with the fiscal year. Good. Okay. So Thank you. Okay, vote please. Dr. Gase. Yes. Mr. Kizabeth. Yes. Mr. Williams. Yes. Mr. Perez. Yes. Then 8.11, correct? Approve the administrator contract. And that is for Jerry Nadeau. Is that how you pronounce his name? Nadeau. Nadeau. For his director of student services. And can you explain that, Mr. Bose? Yes, uh, Mr. Nadeau is uh, currently living in the Columbus area and employed with Buckeye Community Hope Foundation as a school improvement specialist. He is originally from Northeastern Ohio and um, graduated from Jackson High School up around the Maslin area, I believe it is. Uh, he holds degrees from Mount Union, Akron, and Ashland University. Um, prior to his work at the Buckeye Community School or Foundation, he was the Life Skills High School Director of Academic Supports and Special Education. So he comes to us with a vast background and experiences in special education. He was a special ed teacher for eight years in the early 2000s before he went into the administrative ranks. So we're very excited to get Jerry on board with us and get him into the district 
to start working with our special education staff. Okay, any other discussion? I need a motion, don't I? Okay. So move. Motion, Mr. Kisbeth. Second. Second, Dr. Gase. Vote, please. Mr. Kisbeth. Yes. Dr. Gase. Yes. Mr. Williams. Yes. Mr. Perez. Yes. Then 7.03, as explained, these are kind of out of order numerically, but there's no missing items there. The superintendent recommends that the Tiffin City School Board of Education approve the 2022-23 Columbian Parent Student Handbook. And so have, so second? Second. Second, Mr. Williams. Discussion? I have some discussions. I know it's not going to get changed in this book, but for the next year, uh, I've brought up this issue before with the grade point scale. I have in my hands the upper Arlington scale, uh, scale that they use. An A minus is 90 to 92. I believe in our scale that would be a B plus. And I've always asked how come, you know, when we transfer to our grades for college, our kid's gonna be showing a B, their kid's gonna be showing an A, it'll affect their GPA. Is there any reason that we're not compatible to other schools or are we putting our kids at disadvantages in that that kid's gonna have an A on their transcript ours is going to have a B. And so it's not like they give any extra credit for having a Tiffin A or a Tiffin B. So why aren't we consistent with the other schools? And then the other thing is, I hope down the road that the manual become more friendly. I think it starts off with the grades and then it goes straight into like um, discipline as if discipline is the focus of our school. And I know as a parent, I kind of want to see where parking is, where what the dress code is, what the grading scale is. And then I think we did discuss with Dr. Zoller, at least I did, the idea that we would revise or look at the discipline process, especially for athletes, to make it clear um, what the process is. And then I think also in the dress code section, I think that needs to at some point be revisited. I think it has like shorts, skirts up to mid thigh, and then it says no gang colors. I don't know why the two run into each other, but um, it's, you know, it seems kind of like thrown together and it doesn't seem very well organized or useful for a parent coming in. What do I actually can or can't use? And then I did discover again, rereading it, that we have a parking policy that apparently hasn't been enforced. Did you know that the parking by the school is for staff and faculty? And I think it offers us an opportunity to either someday either number our spots or control it. But students, you know, make maybe they want to, you know, we can issue permits or dedicate parking spaces for people so that there's an incentive to do that. And if staff expects to have staff parking by the school, they should be able to have it by the school if it's meant to be for them. Um, and then I think, I think those are just basic outlines for, I think we can improve the student handbook, but just down the road, just ideas. But other than that, we can't do it today because it's got to be approved. Um, and then maybe some links like yours has. <laughs> uh, and just know, like the reason for the order that it's in, it's alphabetical. Yes. So that that's why it goes in the order that you know you happen to mention. But if it has those bookmarks like ours does, right. it makes it much easier. I'm used to dealing to with it. like we deal numerical sections, but yeah. we deal with them in the order that you know we. I guess we don't do it like the library is alphabetical as well. But, you know, I think it's some of those, and Dustin has mentioned, some of these things I think have to be revisited. We don't have a, what did they, what was our committee program committee anymore mm -hmm. to look at some of that and say. And, and dress code was looked at about four years ago. I we remember had that. parents who were involved in that. But, but I think it was looking at a full. There's always time for review. And right. I think they were looking change. at a dress code and not just what's actually in our dress code to see if it's even enforceable or what's, you know, can it be tightened up or what. I think parents have said they just want to see what's there in force, but I don't know if it's really clear what's in there. Mm -hmm. So, sure. but again, I think that has to be approved before we start the school year, correct? Oh, that it, one issue is there's a process in there for a student complaining of, I guess, about um, harassment, sexual harassment from another student, that it goes through counselors and stuff like that. I didn't see anything in the manual about a student wanting to complain about a faculty member or a coach or an adult. And I think that probably needs to be something we look at so that students know that they can also report that as well. But other than that, I'll open up the floor. I think anytime there's a sexual harassment, just report and get it sent to central office where there's an officer in charge. 
and speaking of grace, uh -huh. there I am. I can hear you. Um, there's been an awful lot of time put in to our grading scale, an extraordinary amount of time. Not that it can't be reviewed, but uh, as being formerly a high school principal, I can proudly tell you that getting the diploma from Columbia High School means something. And so I would hate to see us water down grades because somebody else is doing it. I, that's just a philosophical point of view. Well, it's not watering down. You got 90% there, you got 90% here. It's the same performance, you know. And now we're competing with, you know, online academies. I know Dustin was just mentioning before, we had schools at collegiate level, right? A's were 80%. And, you know. A's I, at 80%, what's that tell you? Well, but that's what your kid's going to compete with. And well, I'm sorry, that's a, that's a false, that's a false reading. Yes. 80% is 80%. Yes. But what I'm saying is that's the discussion I have. So if anybody else has any other discussion, we can have a vote on it. Vote to approve the student handbook. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Kizabeth? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. Then that takes us to item 7.04. Approve the NCOESC educational service contract for FY 2023, correct? And the superintendent recommends that we approve that. And I believe he emailed his recommendation to the whole board as to his outline, and he's not here tonight. But um, just to give some history, after the last board meeting, um, they did have a meeting with our superintendent and with Dr. McBride and myself, that's the meeting they requested, but also with our superintendent, which is something we required. Um, they wanted to give some outlines to some of the things that were said at the meeting, but I think ultimately what was decided is, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Bose, but there's gonna be a series of meetings from now on between the two to try to work on this relationship. And I think I emailed to the board what I think summary of what I thought happened at the meeting was, I wanna be respectful of all the board members, I didn't ask to be there, um, but was invited, I think, because they did president, vice president. But I think in reality, we have to understand that one, these discussions should have probably started in January earlier. Um, it's kind of late in the, in the process, but two is I think we have to expect that the relationship between the two of us, I think both sides are probably gonna have to reevaluate some things. And I think for each side, I think, but we're not looking at in a position to make any major changes today. So I think that's why the superintendent recommended keeping the contract that he proposed at this point. So if there's any other discussion. Well, first of all, I need a motion to approve it before we have discussion. So moved. Second. 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 Okay, now any discussion. Okay. Do you have anything, Dustin? No, just to kind of echo what you said, I think is you know, Mr. Richards comes in. I think we need to make sure that we do have a time frame in mind that we want to have a, a more of a strategic plan around the, the preschool and what we intend to do with it. Right. Um, you know, not hopefully not find ourselves in another spot here. where We've got a, a contract we have to vote on because it's a really our only option. I mean, we, we kind of we don't have many options at this point. All right, so, and I would just like to say, I have full confidence in our program at Lincoln School and in our staff. So I know I've heard from parents that are ecstatic about our program, you know, but I still hear from families that are happy with the FLC. And I think philosophically as a board one day, you know, I think it's been the position of the philosophy of the board before I were, was ever on it, that we want to give parents a choice. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Gates. Yeah, I think that's that's been, um, that goes back quite a few years. Uh, Previous board members uh, had some fundamental dis disagreements with the previous superintendent, the NCOSC. And um, I think um, the last few years, boards have done a pretty good job of getting back in uh, a better relationship with the NCOSC, which I think is extremely important. But I and to my to my perusal, uh, uh, I, I believe that there's a lot of these things are somewhat semantical there 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 differences in in um, perceptions i think we all are looking at things similarly we just don't believe that the process 
suits the way we believe, like Tiffin City and the uh, the FLC, with in, with in regards to some of the um, um, the um, evaluations go, like who's in charge, and, and in the past has been uh, kind of a handshake deal, and some of these things were agreed upon for so long that it becomes second nature to what you do, and when it's when it's written down or when something gets adjusted on the other side, it does change the the the, the approach a bit. And I I think the bottom line is uh, we have to codify all this in in writing and make sure that everybody's in agreement and so that we're not you know stepping on each other's toes. So I agree with the, Dr. Zauer. You know, let's take our time and and um, make sure make sure we got this right. And just to clarify, the the item we're being asked to vote on today is identical to the item from last month. That's correct? Mm -hmm. And then I think we did ask about parsing out the parts with the staff, and I want them to also know it's just not about the FLC. We get critical staff through them, Mr. Weber, and we get our curriculum director and who put us through the whole Tornado Academy, and we could have done it without her. So I think we have to be mindful that this relationship is bigger than just one little component. and. Further, that this is a discussion that really needs to be had, and I think we stressed it at the meeting between, and it's going to be Mr. Richards now, and Ms. Loring over at, at the ESC, that this is what the professionals do, and he needs to tell us what's in the best interest of our district and have that information for the board and, you know, give us the best contract for our district, as I'm sure they're going to be doing for themselves. So, but I, any other discussion? Okay, vote please. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Kisabeth? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. Item 7.05, approve the OFC locals 570 and 571, AFSCME AFL CIO tentative agreements. And these are for the other bargaining units to get the same agreement that the other units have, correct, Ms. Perry? Yes, this would be for the food service um, and educational aids. Okay. So moved. Second. Discussion? Vote, please. Mr. Kisabeth? Yes. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. 7.06, approve salary wage schedule adjustments. And these are for the district's administrators as outlined below. And again, this is um, rights for lump sum payments too. Um, adjust our administrators as well, correct? This is all non-represented Not employees. So that would be administrators and all support staff that are not represented. Okay. Such as, such as secretaries, bus drivers, and so forth. Uh, Mrs. Perry, am I allowed to vote on this? If you think there's you a conflict, be. don't even discuss it. You should abstain. So don't even discuss it at that point. You have a conflict? I had to think about the classification, okay. but yeah, you should abstain. Okay, so any other discussion between the remaining board members? Okay, hearing none, then you have a vote, please. Or do we have a motion already? We don't have a motion. Okay, I'll move to approve it. Can I have a second? Second. Discussion? Vote, please. Mr. Perez? Yes. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Kisabeth? Yes. Mr. Williams? Abstain. 7.07, 7. approve the compensation step increases for administrators and supervisors. Um, is that Ms. Perry or Mr. Bose? Can you explain that? That is, uh, Dr. Zeller is recommending that all administrators and supervisors um, bump one step on the salary schedule. For example, from step nine to step 10 or step two to step three on the salary okay. schedule. And so the people that are recommended for hiring at steps today, that's the steps they're gonna be at. Okay. Yeah, this is for all returning administrators. Um, all other non-represented employees automatically increase a right. step based on the support staff handbook that was already approved by the board years ago. Okay. Okay, so motion to approve 707. So moved. Second. Second. Second, Mr. Kisbeth. Any discussion? 
And then for all of these, these are in your forecast already? Oh. Yes. Okay. Yes. All of these action items have already been forecasted. Okay. Vote, please. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Kizabeth? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. 7.08, adopt resolution authorizing the purchase of school buses. Mr. Daniel, you described that already. Motion, no. motion Dr. Gase, second? Second. Second, Mr. Williams. Discussion? Vote? Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Kizabeth? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. 7.09, approve the Workers' Compensation Group retros Retrospective Rating Program. We're already part of this, correct? Yes, this is a renewal. This is the same group that we've been with at least since 2012, um, probably even earlier than that. And they give us a discounted group rating for our workers' compensation premium. Okay. Motion? So moved. Motion, Kisbeth. Second. Second, Dr. Gase. Discussion? Vote? Mr. Kisbeth? Yes. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. 7.10, approve Ohio Health Mansfield Hospital Home Instruction Tutor Contract. And I think you all have a copy of that. Do we? This, this is for um, our kids that are being serviced in Mansfield. So moved. So a second. Second. Second, Mr. Williams, any discussion? Vote, please. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Kizabeth? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. 7.11, approve the 2022-23 CCP agreement with Terror State Community College. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion, Dr. Gase? Second? Second. Second, Mr. Williams. Any discussion? Vote, please. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Kizabeth? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. And then 7.12, approve the FY23 Student and Family Support Specialist Services Program contract. Do you have a motion to do so? Or do you guys want to have it explained first? This is a contract um, that Calvert Catholic Schools is utilizing through auxiliary services to hire a family support specialist. Okay, a motion to do so then? That's, that's through the ESC. Yeah. It's through the ESC, but it's funded through auxiliary, auxiliary services funds. Auxiliary services are state funds that are restricted for uses at Calvert. All right. Where we act as their agent, correct? We're the fiscal agent, agent. yes. So, so moved. Second. Second, Mr. Kisbeth. Discussion? Vote? Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Kisbeth? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. 7.13, adopt temporary appropriation measures for fiscal year 2023. Ms. Perry? This is the annual um, requirement so that we can continue spending money on July 1st because this year's appropriations are going to expire on June 30th. Um, so we adopt a temporary measure based on the five year forecast. Um, and we do that until we can have the Budget Commission certify our ending balances that are determined on June 30th and the estimated revenue for next year. Once the resources are certified by the Budget Commission, then we can set our permanent appropriations for actual expenditure levels. Okay, motion. So moved. Motion, Dr. Gay, second. Second. Mr. Williams, discussion, vote. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Kizabeth? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. Okay, that takes us to the added item. 7.15, approve the administrator contract, and this would be to hire David Alvarado to be the next Columbian High School principal at class one step 10 for 260 days. Do I, and starting August 1st, correct? And then the next one following that 6, 7.16 is to hire him as a consultant before that, correct, Mr. Bose? So we can get in there. So regarding 7.15, do I have a motion to approve that contract? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? We, we are extremely excited to get Mr. Alvarado on board with Tiffin City Schools. He is a 
well-respected leader and administrator uh, within our area. Uh, he comes to us from currently Finley City Schools as an associate principal at their high school. Prior to that, he was the superintendent of Hopewell Local Schools. Uh, and prior to that, he was a middle school principal in Finley, Finley for several years. Um, David lives just outside of Tiffin uh, with his wife. I think he's has uh, two grown sons, but nonetheless, we are, we're, we're really excited to get David uh, back at Tiffin City Schools. He started his career here in 1998, I believe, as an intervention specialist. So we're looking forward to having him rejoin the TCS family, if you will. And Mr. Richards was involved in the process? Correct, he was. Okay. You have any other questions for Mr. Bose on that? Okay, we, have a, we already had a motion to do so. Discussion's over. Vote, please. Mr. Kizabeth? Yes. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. 7.16 is approved the consulting agreement. It's up to 10 days before he starts from July 1st through July 31st. And that's to help with the transition. So, so moved. Motion, Kizabeth? Second. Second, Gase. Any discussion? Vote, please. Mr. Kizabeth? Yes. Dr. Gates? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. And that takes us to section nine, opportunity for the public to dialogue with the board. If anybody wants to start a dialogue with the board, just step up to the microphone. Okay. There's nobody online either, correct? So we don't. Okay, nobody approaching the microphone. We're gonna to move to item 10, board discussion. It said TBD. Um, Dr. McBride wanted to discuss a possible board retreat with Mr. Richards. I think he emailed all the board with a possible date. So I would just ask that everyone get back to him to see if that's even a date. And then I think at some point, it's probably something that would be beneficial to everyone. So any other items that the board wants to discuss? Um, now that our student representatives are no longer with us at the meetings, um, do we have any representation at Sentinel any longer? No. Okay. Actually, yes, we do. We do, it is still Mr. Widman is still appointed to that board. And so he was having the, the student cover for him, but he's the actual appointed representative for the school board. Okay. So in his term, I think expires maybe December, because I appointed him, it's four years, right? Yeah. It's something like that. Okay, so he's the official Tiffin City Schools representative right. on the Sentinel board. So I guess we okay. could contact him and ask him for a written report until the students start, if that's what we want to do. But I know Sentinel did get some awards over, I wasn't sure if any of those kids were ours in the competition. There were four that went on. They were Vanguard Sentinel, so I wasn't sure if they were all Vanguard. Hmm. Okay. But that's a good question. The other question I have is, uh, what are we going to do about the student reps for the upcoming school year that was never resolved? I think Mr. Trisler's still there, right? No, he's gone. So that was never decided what we're going to do with them. And I know that students were interested in applying for that. Uh, is that a, uh, <clears throat> sorry, is that a, maybe a discussion with uh, Mr. Alvarado? I guess so. We doesn't, well, consulting days, I don't know if we want to burn them on that, but um, but at least get a process for getting applications from interested students publicized or something so you could sort through them later. Okay, so any other items for board discussion while you guys are here? Okay, hearing none then, I'm gonna move to the item 11. I believe there is some property that you wish to discuss, Mr. Daniels? We're not, okay. So there are no items for executive session. And so at this point we go to item 13, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Check. Okay, vote please. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Kizabeth? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. Hey, the meeting's been.
I'll just point it here. Paul, well, find out where you're at, how many. How about two questions, Paul? On a good day. Not sleeping, Pastor. Pick up a dozen days. 